Hey guys, I'm Joe Griffin. I am absolutely in love with hunting the West, particularly hunting elk, and it's important to me that I do it every single year. Maybe you applied for a draw unit that you didn't get, or maybe this is your first time looking into elk hunting. So one of the best ways to hunt the West is with an OTC tag. They're readily available, offer you elk hunting every single year, which is super important to me. You can get really familiar with an area and return to that area every single year and become a better elk hunter because of it. So buying an over-the-counter tag every year and hunting elk every year makes you a way better elk hunter in the future. 10 years down the road from now, you finally draw a really good tag. If you haven't been hunting over the counter units during that 10 years, at least a few times, you're going to the Super Bowl without ever playing football it's imperative that you have some elk hunting experience before you go into these high dollar hunts. So these are my three top picks for over-the-counter elk hunting states that are available to you every single year. So the first one you should be looking at for an over-the-counter tag is probably the most obvious. It's the one that most people go to for their first elk hunt, and that's Colorado. So Colorado has the highest elk density population of any state, but it also has the most hunters. So Colorado has a massive amount of wilderness available to you and over a hundred over-the-counter units. So Colorado is super popular with with folks from the East and the Midwest because it's logistically the closest place you can get to with an elk population. So in Colorado, you basically have two main choices. You can hunt over-the-counter archery tags, which is good for the entire archery season, or you can take a second or third rifle season, which is much shorter usually about a week. So when you buy an OTC tag in Colorado, it's not good just for that OTC unit that you intend on hunting. Say it goes bad there and you wanna try a different unit across the ridge, it's good for that unit too, as long as it's an OTC unit. So the one potentially negative thing about Colorado is with super high elk density comes super high hunter density and they don't really limit their over-the-counter tags. So the opportunity to see other hunters out there is pretty high. So a lot of Colorado is super high elevation. You're at the front range of the Rocky Mountains. You really Really need to be in shape to hunt this area. There's a lot of really steep country out there that goes down just as fast as it comes up. You're spending a lot of time above timberline. A lot of it's 8,000 to 13,000 feet where these elk live. It's super important to A, be in shape and B, pace yourself when you get out there and acclimate a little bit to that elevation, especially coming from the east like us. Another nice thing about Colorado is it's one of the cheaper states to hunt. It's I think $671 to hunt and you can buy the tag when you get there. So all these tag prices I mentioned today are for non-resident. So state number two is Idaho. Idaho is unique because it's extremely diverse from the panhandle all the way down to the southern border. From sage flats, high alpine, really rocky basins, dark timber, it's kind of got it all. All of these extreme terrain features, you should be in really good shape to hunt this state. It's got a really good population of elk and it also has something cool that no other state has to my knowledge. You can actually tag trade there. There's a hierarchy of tags. If I have an elk tag and I come across a black bear or a mountain lion or a wolf, you can shoot these animals on your elk tag if you don't come across an elk. So let's say you're 10 days into your elk hunt and you haven't seen an elk yet, but you've seen a black bear. You can shoot a black bear on your elk tag there. If the tag is deemed less desirable than the one that you have, you can pursue that animal on an elk tag. One thing to note about Idaho is their over-the-counter tags do sell out. There's a, a capped quota and once they hit it, it's over. So Idaho basically gives you two options for tags when it comes to over-the-counter tags. You have an A tag and you have a B tag. So what the A tag is, is basically you get the entire archery season, which is basically the whole month of September, and then four or five days in October to gun hunt. Now the B tag gives you the first two weeks of September, first to the 14th, and then the vast majority of October to gun hunt. So the trade-off is A tag, you get the entire archery, season, the better part of the rut, very short gun season. B tag, the first two weeks of bow hunting, which is arguably the pre-rut before the rut, and then the majority of gun season to gun hunt. Idaho gives you a region. So whether that's the Panhandle region or the Palisades, two units, six units, you get a cluster of units that you can hunt in that region. Now they're big areas. You're never gonna cover it all in 10 days. While they might not have the population that Colorado has, they still have a really strong elk population. The trade-off between density of hunters and elk there is worth looking at in my opinion. So Idaho comes in at one of the more expensive over-the-counter tags, but in my opinion, it's worth it. At 800 36 bucks, you're getting a really good elk density and an absolutely amazing landscape, diverse country, the Frank Church Wilderness, Salmon River, all that. It's, it's a good bang for the buck. So the third state on our list is Oregon. So the biggest difference about Oregon is there's two species of elk there and there's a unique tactic for both of them. I-5 is the divider and west of I-5 has Roosevelt elk. That's really thick country, 
rainforest-like, it's dense, it goes all the way to the coast. Rosies are bigger bodies, shorter, heavier horns, kind of stubby looking. Now, east of I-5 is Rocky Mountain Elk, and that's more of your typical high meadow, sage. It's got, it's a lot more diverse over there. It's more similar to that of Idaho. Another cool thing about Oregon is it has a ton of lumber company land. Basically, is treated like public land for your over-the-counter tag. You sign in at the warehouser booth and you can go hunt all this property. So one thing to consider if you're not in the best of shape and you don't want to go way up high in elevation, the west side of Oregon is a considerable amount lower in elevation than most places that you would elk hunt. It's got a lot of road systems through these lumber company lands and it's a good option for a guy who maybe isn't in the greatest of shape but still wants to elk hunt. So Oregon kind of comes in at the middle price wise. It's about 760 bucks to hunt elk there, right in the middle between Colorado and Idaho as far as price, but it offers a lot more as far as diversity of what you're hunting. These are three great states that offer over-the-counter elk hunting that you can do every year, growing your elk hunting knowledge so when you finally draw a limited entry hunt, you can use that tag to its fullest potential. So if it's your first time hunting out west and if these opportunities that we talked about are still a little bit too much to bite off, there's a ton of opportunities for cow tags, mule deer, antelope, even black bear out there that are available to you every year. What you need to take away from this is you just need to do it. At whatever degree is right for you, buy a tag, go out west, try it for the first time, and grow your experience out there so the next time you go back, you're gonna be that much further ahead. If you wanna follow me on my hunting season, my Instagram is Joe M. Griffin. I hope you buy a tag this year. I hope you go out and experience it. Good luck if you do.